All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We've got some more SCX 10.3 build this week. We're going to be attaching all the gubbins to the chassis, or at least once we've built it. There's lots to do, so let's get started. In bag F, we have loads of plastic parts, all the mounts for the links and dampers, cross members and bumper mounts. We've also got a bag of screws and the two metal steering arms. Very nice. Right, F1. The upper links. We've got a panhard bar up front, so there's only a single upper link. And of course there's the two for the rear. We need three M3x14s for screws, and three plastic parts for mounts. They all look fairly similar, so you have to check the diagrams carefully to work out which one goes where. Another instance where some sort of markings on the parts would come in rather handy. Not the end of the world though. Worst case, you'll find they don't match up in the next step, and you'll have to swap around some bits. Anyway, what we do is thread in a screw through the hole marked in the diagram, just so it's flush with the inside face. Offer up the rod into the slot, and line it up with the end of the screw. Then, do it up. When done, you'll have one link on its mount. Repeat twice, and you have F1 complete. F2, attaching more links. We need the centre skid. 4 m 3 by 18s 3 m 3 by 12s and 3 m 3 by 8s First, the upper mounts need to get mounted to the skid. The fit is rather nice, with a gentle press they stay in place by themselves. We use the m 3 by 8s and the m 3 by 10s being careful we get the right ones in the right holes. The ones towards the sides of the skids are the longer ones. Fit all three and nip up the screws, and that's the upper links fitted. The lower links fit in the slots in the skid. If we flip the skid over, we can easily slot the rod ends in and pop one of the long screws through the side. It's worth noting that the fit is really good, so if you're trying to force the screw in, it's most likely because the hole in the ball isn't lined up with the screw. Fit all four, and well, that's the links fitted. F4, the steering servo and panhard mount. Now this one's going to be a fun one. Something that should be really simple, that's made rather difficult. I'm not sure whether it's a bit of an attempted vendor lock-in, or just a bit of innocent limited testing. But it's a pain either way. Right, we need for this one, the adjustable bit of the servo mount, the servo mount itself, the front left damper mount, the panhard bar, and the front left damper mount. For screws, there's an M3x10, an M3x14, an M3x8 countersunk, an M3x10 countersunk, and four M3x10s with large, thin heads. For the servo, we're using a 25kg cheap servo. Not the best, but not the worst. And for me, they do the job well enough, which is the main thing. Plus, as mentioned, they're pretty cheap. The problem is, these servos, and most other standard size servos, won't quite fit the stock mount. There's a bit of a bump near the back that looks a bit like a scale oil filter from the bottom. I should think the servos Axial we use on the ready to run trucks will fit nicely, but pretty much any other servo will require some trimming. Essentially, we need to square off the corners so the servo can sit up against the servo mount. A Dremel or other small rotary tool works well. You could also use a small hacksaw since we're cutting square corners, but power tools are always going to be more fun. The trick is to trim a bit off at a time, checking the servo fit until you get it just right. We don't want to remove any more material than we have to and weaken the structure. After a couple of passes, we have a good fit for the servo. It's all a bit of a faff. I'd like to think it's just a lack of testing with third-party servos, but these days, who knows? To fit the servo, we need to attach the adjustable end of the mount with the M3x10. We want to do it up so the adjustable part can still freely slide back and forth. Then we pop the servo in and install the four screws with the large heads. Do up all four so they're just not quite clamping the servo down. Then nip them up a little bit at a time until they're all nice and snug. Remember, we don't want to over tighten them and squash the servo lugs or strip the threads. We just need to take them down so they're gripping the servo, then add another eighth of a turn. There's no need to go any tighter. Once the servo is all tightened up, give the screw on the adjustable bit a tighten too. Next we've got the servo arm to go on, 
but before we fit it, we need to make sure the servo is at its midpoint. You can rig up your electronics, so the ESC receiver and a battery, making sure the trims are neutral. Or if you have a servo tester, just plug it in and set it to the midpoint. Now we can pop the servo arm onto the splines. We want it to stick out to the front, getting it as close to straight as we can. Usually it'll be slightly off to one side or the other. The trick is to pick the one that's positioned the straightest. Then when we set up the radio, we can use the sub trim to get it bang on. Since this is an all metal servo and it's gonna be a bit tricky to get to the screw once the axle's on, I'm gonna use a tiny bit of thread lock before fitting the M3x10 countersunk screw. And another little tip, when you tighten a screw, don't tighten it with the servo fighting you. Brace the arm with a finger so you're not stressing anything. Although modern powerful servos will probably manage okay, it's a good habit to get into, especially for the small servos. Once it's all on, the servo gets a quick sweep back and forth to make sure the arm clears the mount okay. Most servos will be just fine, but it's a good time to check when it's easy to fix. Next, we have the panhard mount. The plastic the damper mount's made from is very hard, so it would be tricky to screw the M3 screw into. If we check the build tips on RC Crawler, it says to tap some threads before screwing in the screws, which will make things a lot easier. Now, because the plastic's so tough, it does take threads rather nicely. Then, to attach the mount, we just use the M3 by out countersunk screw at the top. When we fit it to the chassis, there's another screw that passes through the bottom. Next, we fit the panhard bar with the M3 by 14. And, well, that's F3 complete. Okay, step F4, the left side of the chassis. For screws, we've got an M3 by 8, an M3 by 10 countersunk, six M3 by 12 countersunk, and an M3 by 14. And we need the two assemblies we just put together, along with the front bumper mount, the front left body mount, the left electronics platform slash rock slider, rear upper cross member, rear lower cross member and battery mount, and the rear left damper mount. And lastly, the two chassis rails that make up the left side. They're fairly easy to tell apart with the printed axial logo and all the lumps, bumps and holes. Starting at the top of the page, we'll need the front left chassis rail. We need to line up the front damper mount with the holes on the chassis. Then right at the front, we slot the front body mount into the gap. It uses the M3x10 to go through the damper mount, through the body mount, through the chassis, then it threads into the rear hole in the bumper mount. It's a bit of a handful, but quite manageable. For now we'll leave this and all the other screws in this step a little bit loose so all the parts can still move around. We won't do them up until the two halves of the chassis go together, so we can make sure the chassis is built straight and true. Next we offer up the servo mount and the M3x14 in the front hole. That, as well as attaching the damper mount to the chassis, also acts as the front mount for the penhard mount. The great thing is, because the fit's so good on the parts, the screw passes straight through without any fiddling around trying to get things lined up. It's really nice to put together. At the rear of the damper mount, we use the M3x12 countersunk. The last screw on this side is an M3x10 that goes in right at the front of the bumper mount. And the last thing to do is run all the screws in so they're nice and even, and still just about let all the plastic parts wobble, so with just a little bit of slack. Next there's the electronics tray which just mounts up with the M3x8. It's only mounted at one end for the time being. It'll get two more screws on the next page when we put the two chassis rails together. For the bottom half of the page we've got the rear chassis rail. Again, we're just going to leave everything slightly loose for the time being. The damper mount sits on the outside of the chassis, where we pass an M3x12 through the hole, through the chassis, and thread it into the rearmost hole in the lower cross member. The next hole forward gets an M3x12. And at the top of the mount we use another two M3x12s to fit the upper cross member. It's worth noting that this has a conventional set of body mount holes. The kit comes with a couple of conventional body mounting posts too. It's quite handy if you're going to change the body from the stock Jeep. Of course, just as before, we need to do all the screws up just far enough that we still have a little bit of wobble left in the parts. Step F5, bringing the left side together. 
For screws we just need two M3 by 12s and for the parts we need the chassis ends and the centre skid with the links. I found the easiest way to get everything lined up was to pop the two screws in through the bottom of the electronics tray and through the chassis. Then offer up the rear chassis making sure you've got the right holes. For the Jeep we want to use the longest setting so make sure the front screws go through the end hole in the rear chassis. Now we can offer up the centre skid and start doing up the screws. To draw the skid in nice and straight tighten each screw a couple of turns and alternate between them. Keep going until they're almost done up but still allow for a little bit of movement in the parts. F6 the other half of the chassis. This time we need four M3 by 12 countersunk screws, an M3 by 8 and an M3 by 12. The rear right damper mount, the right side chassis rails and the right electronics tray slash slider. Most of this is just a repeat of the previous steps. We need to offer up the rear damper mount to the chassis rail and the cross member on the other side. Then attach it with the four countersunk screws. Next we attach the tray to the rail with the M3 by 8 in the frontmost hole and lastly we offer up the front rail to the rest of the chassis and use the two M3 by 12s to attach it, threading it into the centre skid. Again just as before all these screws want to be just a little bit loose so the bits can still move. Now this is definitely one of those chassis that comes together really quickly. You get a great feeling of progress, great fun. Step F7, bringing it together and fitting the gearbox. We're going to need two M3 by 12s, two M3 by 10 countersunk and four M3 by 12 countersunk. For plastic we have the front right damper mount and front right body mount. The damper mount gets fitted with the two M3 by 12 countersunk screws threading into the survey mount and the body mount gets the two M3 by 10s. Now we've got those in, we've got enough screws that we can tighten them up properly. We want to start in one corner, taking up the slack, then move to the opposite corner, take up the slack, and so on. Then go round again, nipping them up an extra eighth of a turn. All being well, you'll end up with a stress-free straight chassis. It's not really so critical on a one-tenth chassis, but just like so many things, it's a good habit to get into. This step also has us fit the receiver box, but I'm not completely sure if our receiver is going to fit, so for now we'll skip that and fit it during the electronics install. Next we have the gearbox, which I think should really be on a separate step after completing the basic chassis, but here we go. We need to offer up the gearbox, sitting the posts on the bottom to the recess in the skid. It should fairly positively drop into place when it's just right. To attach it we thread in two M3 by 12 countersunk screws through the bottom and from the top into the lugs on the electronics tray we use the two M3 by 12s. Now this is a good example of how well tied together all the parts are. It's going to make it a right pain to take things apart if we need to repair it later but it's going to make for an immensely strong chassis. A very good if slightly fiddly design. Step F8 the front axle. On this one we need an M3 by 12, two M3 by 14s, an M3 by 16, an M3 by 25 and an M3 by 12 screw pin. And of course we need the bits for the front drive shaft we put to the side in the last video. The steering drag link and the short push rod and lastly the front axle itself. Okay starting with the drag link we slot it into the gaps in the knuckle and on the left side we use the M3 by 16 to hold it in place. It can be a bit of a tight fit, you have to get the flats on the balls perfectly straight for it to slide in. Then on the right hand side we fit the short rod with the long screw. There's no nuts on this axle, the screws just thread straight into the plastic. Which suits me as it's one less thing to lose if you have to fiddle about with the steering when out and about. Just make sure you don't over tighten them and strip the plastic. For the next part we're going to fit the top link to the top of the axle. To make things easier we'll start threading the M3 by 14 into the plastic now so there's one less thing to keep hold of. Next we will bring the chassis back and pop the upper link into the slot and do up the screw. 
The short rod needs to get attached to the servo arms hole next. Now it's metal on metal, so we'll pop some thread lock into the threaded hole before fitting the rod. Just a spot stirred around with a cocktail stick will do the job. Now we can offer up the rod end and pop in the M3 by 12 and nip it up. Lastly, we need to fit the drive shaft. The spline section fits into the bit on the gearbox and we slide the other section over the end. Make sure the two CVs are in line. They should both be at the same angle. Otherwise, you might get a bit of vibration and in extreme cases, shorten the life of the joints. The CV then slides over the shaft on the axle, line up the holes, apply a bit of thread lock to the screw pin and install it. And something that's really easy to miss, we also need to fit the panhard bar to the axle in this step. I missed it when doing the build, and believe it or not, I also missed it when doing the voiceover. It almost gets lost in the diagram. It's not difficult to fit, of course, even with the other bits attached. It's still not a huge problem. It would have been nice if the diagram was a little bit clearer, though. Perhaps by greying out some of it and only having full black on the important bits so they stand out. Anyway, with that done, that's F8 complete. F9, the front dampers. Now before we get going with parts, on the RC crawler thread it says to tap the upper mounting holes for the dampers. Just like the panhard mount, we're threading into the damper mounts which are really hard plastic. On the left side, watch out for overshooting and marking up the side of your servo. In hindsight, it might have been better to do this before we fitted the damper mounts to the chassis. That's why it's a good idea to read through the manual and all the other info before starting the build, but I missed this one. This time then, we need an M3x18, an M3x20 and two M3x25s. We'll also need a pair of dampers, and don't forget there's two different spring rates and we need to choose the right ones. If we look at the RC crawler thread again, it says we need the green ones up front. I'm going to guess they're slightly stiffer to put up with the motor being right up the front. Right, on the right hand side we need to use the M3x20 up top to fit the damper to the damper mount. Take up the slack and then give it another eighth of a turn. Then under the chassis, we start the thread on one of the M3x25s into the lower mount so it's flush on the inside. Slot in the rod end and tighten up the screw the rest of the way. On the left side, it's pretty much the same except for one crucial difference. The screw for the top mount is an M3x18, 2mm shorter than the right hand one. The damper mount is a little bit narrower to allow clearance for the motor. Now I feel like this might have been a design bodge late in the project so they didn't have to tweak lots of parts to get things to fit. I could be wrong but it doesn't seem like something that you'd do on purpose. It's going to work of course, it just lacks symmetry. The bottom end of the damper is fine though so we attach it to the axle with another M3x25. And well that's the front axle fitted. F10 fitting the rear axle. This is of course fairly similar to the front, except we have a four link setup rather than a panhard bar. Again we need to tap some threads into the damper mount so we can get the screws into the tough plastic. Then we need three M3x25s, two M3x20s and an M4x12 screw pin. Plus for parts we need the rear drive shaft and the dampers with the red springs. For the top links, we'll start by pushing in an M3x25 into the top mount so it's flush with the inside. Then offer up the nearest upper link and push the screw in until it's flush with the next slot. Pop the second rod end in and push the screw the rest of the way, then screw it in. Next we have the dampers, and there's no odd screw sizing this time, so we just attach them to the top damper mount with an M3x20 on each side. Then on the bottom we fit the drive shaft, thread lock the drive pin and install it. And lastly, just like the front, we use the M3x25s to fit the lower links and the bottom of the dampers to the axle. Nip up the screws, make sure the drive shafts are properly aligned and that's F10 complete. Now other than one of the front mounts being thinner than the other, I'm rather impressed so far. It feels totally solid with lovely smooth motion on the axles. 
it has some heft to it without feeling like it's overweight, which for my preference is bang on. Next week we might have to do another double feature. Bag G is just the battery mounts and bag H is the shift servos, which when recording hadn't actually arrived yet. The arch liners and the engine cover as well, so quite short sections. Actually, bag I is then just the wheels and tyres, so that's just a single step. Maybe we'll end up with a triple feature. Anyway, for this week, that's going to be it. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys! Bye.